Welcome to Unit 5, Lesson 3. Today we're going to talk about the nerve impulse. And in particular, we're going to talk about sending an electrical signal. So Part 1, which will be mandatory, will cover the first two learning objectives, including understanding why we have a combination of electrical and chemical signals in our nervous system and identifying how the electrical signal travels along a neuron. So that's part one is mandatory. And then part two, unless you were away, we will cover in class and is optional. And we'll cover the learning outcomes listed here. So let's begin with talking about what a nerve impulse is. And first of all, nerve impulses allow us to blank and blank to our blank and blank environment. Well, what do our senses allow us to do? They allow us to monitor, and then our effectors allow us to respond to our inside and outside, technical names, internal, that's correct, external environment. But to do this, the nerve impulse involves two parts. First, well, order doesn't really matter because they work together, but one, we have the electrical signal, which is beneficial because it's very fast. Indeed, electrical signals can travel up to 720 kilometers per hour. This is a good thing. It allows us to respond to our environment very quickly. But the downside of an electrical signal is it's on or off. In fact, we say it's an all or nothing response. similar to dominoes. You line them up, once you tip one over, the whole thing's going. And the downside of that is if you're sending a signal and then you need to change your mind, you can't if all you were relying on was an electrical signal. So this actually turns out to be a downside. In fact, the electrical signal, you cannot vary its sort of intensity. Once it's on, it's just on. If we want to change the so-called intensity, so you feel more or less pressure, more or less pain, it's not changing the degree of the electrical signal. It's to change intensity, you either send the signal more often, or through more neurons. The second part of a nerve impulse is the chemical signal. And we're going to talk about that next day but the chemical signal involves what's called neurotransmitters. And compared to electrical signal, it is slower, and it's why we don't rely on it in and of itself. 
but it does have a benefit in that it allows for adjustments and integration of multiple inputs. So essentially, our nervous system is an electrical pathway with lots of little tiny breaks where the chemical signal can take in input from different neurons and then integrate it and determine the outcome. So we can actually change our mind when we're sending an electrical signal. To show you how that works, we're going to look at signal transduction within and between neurons. So we just want to go over some ideas that we've been working with looking at the neuron. So here, this end of the neuron is called the, hopefully you've got it by now, the dendrite. And its job is to receive chemical signals. from other neurons. Sorry, I put my arm on my keyboard. And not only does it receive those signals, it essentially integrates or sums them up and decides what to do depending on the signals. And we'll talk about how it integrates signals when we talk about the chemical signal. We then have this portion from here to here and that is the correct axon and its job is to carry electrical signals away remember axon is away from the dendrite to the axon terminal. And this is going to be the all or nothing response. Once it's traveling along the axon, we can't call it back. If we want to make a change, we'll have to make a change between this neuron and the next neuron. And just to remind you, this part up here with the nucleus is going to be the cell body. And its job is to perform just basic cellular functions. like making proteins, making ATP, that type of thing. We call these the housekeeping functions. Okay. And at the end here, the very end, we have the axon ends in the, that's correct, the axon terminal. and it converts the electrical signal back into a chemical signal. signal then travels across. I'm going to show you in the next pair of neurons just because there's a little more room. It's called the synapse. 
sometimes they make that comment you're firing on all your synapses is where signal goes from electrical to chemical and potentially back to electrical depending on the other chemical signals being sent. Because what I've shown here is that only one single sort of pathway, but at a synapse there's lots of neurons feeding into this pathway. So really there's lots of other axon terminals feeding into this. So they can take input from multiple places. Chemicals, lots of different chemical signals being sent to it. And it can decide essentially by adding up all those chemical signals whether or not to continue with that electrical signal. Okay. So just a point of note, if we are talking about electrical signal within a neuron it always travels dendrite to axon. If we're talking about a chemical signal, between two neurons, it always travels from first neurons axon to second neurons dendrite okay so essentially a nerve impulse has two components electrical, which allows for speed, and chemical, which allows for control. And that's the end of part one, mandatory. If you have any questions, please come see me. Otherwise, have a good day, and I'll see you in class.